Hey, I'm Ava. Before we dive into my story, could you hit that like and subscribe button? Thanks. Now let's get started. Life in the city was always bustling, and as a marketing executive at Dawson & Company, I was right in the thick of it. My boss, Mr. Carter, was as demanding as they come. Known for his keen eye for detail and no-nonsense approach, working under him meant constantly being on your toes. Most nights, back at our cozy apartment, Mike and I would unwind from our hectic days. Mike, a graphic designer, often had his own tales of workplace drama, but he preferred to keep things light at home, especially when it came to his family. The topic of his estranged brother, Alex, was a no-go zone, a chapter from his past he kept firmly closed. One evening, as we were curled up with some takeout, I noticed Mike seemed more pensive than usual. You seem miles away, I remarked, nudging him playfully. Work stuff? He shook his head, setting aside his half-eaten meal. Just thinking about family stuff. Alex, mostly. I nodded, knowing better than to probe too deeply. Mike and Alex's fallout was a sensitive topic, one he rarely opened up about. The next day at work, I could sense Mr. Carter's watchful eyes on me more than usual. His scrutiny was intense, almost as if he was looking for a mistake to pounce on. It was unnerving, but I brushed it off as him being his usual stern self. Then came the day that changed everything. I was summoned to Mr. Carter's office. The air was thick with tension as I walked in. Ava, we need to discuss something important, he began, his voice devoid of its usual sternness. I waited, expecting feedback on a recent project. Your connection to Mike Harrison has come to my attention. He's my estranged brother, he stated bluntly. I was stunned into silence. The room seemed to spin as I processed his words. Mr. Carter was Mike's brother? Alex? Seeing my shock, he continued. I value professionalism above all else. Your presence here, given this revelation, is a conflict of interest. But my work has always been top-notch, I countered, my mind racing. This doesn't change my performance. He leaned back in his chair, his expression unyielding. The decision is final. You're being let go. I felt a mix of disbelief and anger. This is unfair. You're letting me go because of a personal grudge? There's no place for personal relationships in business decisions, he replied coldly. Leaving his office, I felt a sense of betrayal. The job I had dedicated so much to, taken away for reasons beyond my control. As dawn broke, I knew one thing for sure. This was not going to be a story of defeat. It was going to be a story of resilience, of standing up and making my voice heard. After the shocking revelation and my subsequent firing by Mr. Carter, I was in a state of disbelief. The unfairness of it all was suffocating. Mr. Carter, or rather Alex, had discovered my connection to his estranged brother through a family photo on social media and decided to use a minor mistake in my project as a pretext to fire me. I remember standing in his office, feeling a chill as he coldly laid out his other reasons. Your performance has been slipping, Ava. This error in the Henderson project is just the latest example. I was stunned. But that's just a minor issue. I can fix it. My overall performance has always been strong. Alex's face was unreadable. I'm sorry, but my decision is final. You're no longer employed at Dawson & Company. At home, I broke the news to Mike. He was shocked and angry, his fists clenching as I recounted what his brother had done. He can't just fire you for being married to me. That's not just unfair, it's illegal. Mike's voice was a mix of rage and helplessness. I know, I replied, trying to hold back my own tears. But what can we do? He's the boss, and he's made up his mind. Mike paced the room, deep in thought. We'll fight this, Ava. We'll get a lawyer, take this to the labor board. He can't get away with this. I nodded, but a part of me felt like David facing Goliath. Dawson & Co. was a powerful firm, and Alex was at its helm. The next few days were a whirlwind of emotions. I reached out to a few former colleagues and friends, seeking advice and support. Their reactions ranged from outrage to sympathy, but the underlying message was clear. I had been wronged, and I needed to stand up for myself. Determined, I started putting together a plan. I couldn't let Alex's actions go unchallenged. It wasn't just about the job, it was about principle, about standing up against unfair treatment. I spent hours researching my rights, talking to employment lawyers, and gathering evidence. The minor mistake in the Henderson Project was just that, minor. It was clear that my firing was personal, not professional. Mike was a constant source of support, but I could see the toll it was taking on him. 
The conflict with his brother had resurfaced old wounds, and the stress was palpable. As I delved deeper into my fight, I discovered I wasn't alone. Other former employees of Dawson & Co. had faced similar unfair treatment. Their stories added fuel to my fire. This was bigger than just my situation. It was about standing up to a toxic workplace culture. The chapter of my life at Dawson & Co. was closed, but a new one was just beginning. It was time to turn my downfall into a fight for justice. Not just for me, but for everyone who had ever been silenced by fear and power. In the wake of my unjust dismissal from Dawson & Co., my resolve to fight against the wrongs I'd suffered only grew stronger. I had lost my job, but I hadn't lost my spirit or my skills. It was time to turn this setback into a stepping stone for something greater. I started by freelancing, tapping into the network of contacts I had built over the years. My reputation for being a hardworking and creative marketer opened doors, and soon I was juggling multiple projects. Freelancing gave me not just an income, but a renewed sense of purpose. But my larger plan was still in the works. I hadn't forgotten about Mr. Carter Alex and the unfairness I had faced. Through my connections, I began to gather information about Dawson and Co.'s internal workings, and what I found was disturbing. There were whispers of unethical practices, of corners being cut for the sake of profits. I knew I had to tread carefully. This wasn't just about exposing a single wrongful termination. It was about shining a light on a culture of corruption. I reached out to some of my former colleagues who had left the company under dubious circumstances. As we talked, a pattern emerged. A pattern of intimidation, unfair dismissals, and a toxic work environment. One evening, I met with Grace, a former Dawson and co-employee who had left the company under mysterious circumstances. We sat in a quiet coffee shop, the hum of the city, a faint background noise. They'll try to discredit you, Grace warned, stirring her coffee. They did it to me when I tried to speak up about the harassment I faced. Her story was jarring, but it fueled my determination. I'm not backing down, I said firmly. We need to bring this to light. Grace nodded, a look of resolve crossing her face. I have some documents, emails, memos. It might help your cause. Armed with this new information, I began to put together a comprehensive picture of the rot within Dawson and company. It wasn't just about Alex anymore. It was about a system that allowed, even encouraged, such behavior. Meanwhile, my freelance work was gaining traction. I was building a name for myself, independent of the tainted reputation of my former employer. Clients were impressed with my work, and word of mouth was spreading. Mike watched my transformation with a mix of pride and concern. Be careful, Ava. You're taking on a lot. He cautioned one night as we sat in our living room, papers and my laptop scattered around. I looked up at him, determination in my eyes. I have to do this, not just for me, but for all the others who can't speak up. As I dove deeper into my investigations, I realized the extent of the malpractice at Dawson and Company. It was a web of deceit, and it went higher up than I had imagined. But I wasn't intimidated. Instead, I felt a surge of purpose. This was my fight, and I was going to see it through. The chapter of retaliation had begun. It wasn't just a personal vendetta. It was a crusade for justice. My journey at Dawson & Co. had ended, but my new journey, one of resilience, integrity, and retribution, was just beginning. The days leading up to the climax were a whirlwind of activity and anticipation. After months of gathering evidence and building my case, the time had come to bring everything into the light. The story of Dawson & Co.'s unethical practices, spearheaded by Mr. Carter, was about to hit the headlines. I remember the morning the news broke. I sat in my modest home office, a cup of coffee in hand, watching the story unfold across various media platforms. The article detailing the company's misdeeds was damning, a comprehensive account of corruption, unfair dismissals, and a toxic work culture. The reaction was instantaneous. Social media erupted with discussions and debates. Clients began to distance themselves from Dawson and company, and their stock prices plummeted. It was a corporate crisis of epic proportions. In the midst of this storm, Mr. Carter Alex found himself at the center of the controversy. He tried to deflect, to deny, but the evidence was irrefutable. The public outcry was too loud to ignore, and soon, the board of directors at Dawson & Company was forced to act. Alex's resignation was announced in a terse statement from the company. 
It felt surreal to see the man who had wielded so much power, who had so unfairly dismissed me, now being forced to step down. But my story didn't end there. The exposure of Dawson and company had unexpectedly catapulted my career. My freelance work had already been gaining traction, but now I was being sought after by top firms. However, I had a different vision. I decided to establish my own marketing firm. With the support of Mike and my network, I laid the foundation for a company built on integrity and ethical practices, values I held dear. The journey wasn't easy. Starting a business from scratch came with its challenges, but the adversity I had faced had only made me stronger. My firm quickly began to make a name for itself, attracting clients who valued transparency and honesty. One day, as I was wrapping up a meeting in my new office, I received an unexpected visitor, Alex. He stood at the doorway, a shadow of his former corporate self. Ava, I... I wanted to apologize, he began, his voice lacking its usual authority, for everything that happened. I was wrong. I looked at him, seeing not the powerful executive, but just a man, humbled by his own misdeeds. Your apology doesn't change what happened, Alex, I replied calmly. I've moved on. I suggest you do the same. He nodded, a sense of resignation in his eyes, and left without another word. In that moment, I realized that his apology hadn't been for me. It was for him, a way to ease his own conscience. But I had already found my closure, not in his words, but in the path I had carved for myself. The story of Dawson and company became a distant memory, a chapter in my past that had propelled me to where I was now. I had not only survived, I had thrived. The evening of the first anniversary of my firm, I stood surrounded by friends, colleagues, and a supportive Mike, celebrating not just the success of my business, but the journey that led me here. To new beginnings, I toasted, raising my glass. This was more than just a triumph over adversity. It was a testament to the power of resilience and integrity. As I looked around at the faces of those who had supported me, I knew that this was just the beginning of a new, exciting chapter. And that's the end of Ava's story of resilience and triumph. Now I have a question for you. If you were in Ava's shoes, would you have accepted Mr. Carter's apology for his unfair actions? Or would you have refused it just like she did? This decision is a profound one touching on forgiveness, justice, and moving on. What's your take on this? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed Ava's journey, and subscribe to the channel for more stories like this. Your support means a lot, and we're excited to bring you more content that sparks conversation and thought. Thanks for watching.